Welcome to the podcast, Jenna. Hi, Welcome Michelle. back. Thank- yeah, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for having me on again. It's always a pleasure to chat with you about all these fun things. Oh yeah, for sure. All things period. So um, really excited to have you on. And I wanted to start with uh, the period is the fifth vital sign. Um, I'd love for you to talk about that. Love to. So, um, you know, our period is an indicator of our overall health. And as women, we're really our menstruators. We're very lucky to have this because our body can't communicate with us in words. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it can't be like, hey, Jenna, hey, Michelle, like you're not getting enough sleep, you're not eating right, or that relationship's not serving you, or you're vitamin B deficient, but it can speak to us in sensations. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the ways this happens is with maybe painful periods or absent periods, uh, a lot of different symptoms. But, you know, our fifth vital sign is pretty important. So the other vital signs would be like respiratory rates, um, blood pressure, which are very important. If those are out of whack, then there's a serious issue and your doctor would be very concerned. Um, and so as menstruators, we look at our period as actually a vital sign. So it's mm-hmm. communicating with us uh, about certain imbalances. And we're very fortunate to have this, I feel. Like I kind of feel yeah. sorry for for people that don't get periods for the opposite, you know, that uh, don't have this valuable uh, line of communication. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And it's such a huge, um, especially for Chinese medicine, it's really at the core and it tells us so much. Um, And it's interesting that you just said that um, about people that don't. And I have had some people that come in wanting to get their period. And I keep having to catch myself because I'm like asking where are they in their cycle? And it's like, it feels like such an anchor. It is. Yeah. And I, that's one thing I, I love about Chinese medicine is that the, the importance of the menstrual cycle. Uh, so, you know, when you go into your practitioner generally, right, you're asking about their menstrual cycle. When was the last time they, they started? Is exactly. That, is that on your, and I want to know where they are in their cycle, mid cycle, where are they, yeah. what's, what are they feeling? Um, and, and that actually is something that I use my points for specifically. That's amazing. And that's one reason I've always really been, um, uh, drawn to Chinese medicine because of that, because I, I always felt like, why, why aren't other doctors asking this question? And that's how I got started. You know, like originally as a nutritionist, I was seeing, you know, in the beginning you see anyone, right? So yeah. I, most people were coming to me when you're first starting your practice and everyone was coming to me for like, I need to lose weight. I need to, and that was like the main thing I was working on. Yeah. And then I realized over time that it was weight lo- weight gain was just a symptom of an imbalance. Right. So when we were delving into the reasons, into, you know, I started, uh, yeah. yes. And I was like finding out there's like these hormone imbalances. And so I started asking all my, my clients about their periods and they're like, why are you asking me about your period? And I was like, mm-hmm. well, because it's really important. So <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, And you kind of get guided as you go on in your in your work and you're like, ah, oh, you uncover it and it starts to make more sense. But it is so interesting how intricate we are as humans and how everything matters, every single part of it. Absolutely. Nothing is there for no reason. If you have a symptom, it doesn't mean like, let's just silence it with Advil or the birth control pill. Like that symptom is there. It's serving a purpose. It's mm-hmm. trying to reveal something to us. For sure. We were just talking about the moon. I didn't um, have this plan, but I was just wanting to talk about that because one of the things that, and I've talked to other practitioners, if there is no period, a lot of times people work on like seed cycling or, or certain other ways with the moon. Have absolutely. you ever- Absolutely. And I always- yeah. Yes, absolutely. I do. I always recommend um, to my clients to, if they're not menstruating, to- kind of still follow the cycles of the moon. So yes, with seed cycling, definitely. So yeah. when do you eat the certain seeds in the first half? Well, from new moon to full moon. And then right. you, you rotate the seeds from full moon to new moon. Um, mm-hmm. I also like to incorporate meditations with my clients mm, on um, the new moon and full moon to bring the period back to them. Um, and also, I think a lot of women, if they're not menstruating, they think, well, I don't need to take rest because I don't have a period. I don't need the rest days like women who have a period. Mm-hmm. No take the rest on the either new moon or full moon and, yeah. and treat your body like you are menstruating. So I always say, you know, stay at home and, you know, take a few hours for yourself or whatever your schedule allows to create some self-care in that day um, as if you were menstruating. Because, you know, if you, 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 if you believe it, 
it's coming. You know, if you manifest it. Oh, totally. It, uh, 100%. It, it, and it's so interesting. You had said that you don't believe that anything in our body or anything that we have is there for no reason. <clears throat> And I feel that way with our imagination and visual visualization. We think of it as just like this random thing. Oh, you know, we get to imagine things. It's not random. I mean, it no. really does have a purpose and it's so connected to our body and our bodies respond. And actually science is yes. catching up with that. Absolutely. It is. It is because I mean, we're, it, it's, our body is all water anyway. And so it picks up the vibrations of our thoughts um, so I feel like too, that can work both ways. Like worrying mm -hmm. is basically manifesting something you don't want exactly. And manifesting like, you know, not daydreaming, but kind of visualizing, like I like the yeah. visualizing is better. What you do want it's is like conscious, attracting conscious that to you. Daydreaming. So it can work two ways. Yes. <laughs> what do we want? Conscious daydreaming. And so also I see this mentality with women who have this narrative, my body hates me. My body is working against me. My body mm -hmm. just doesn't cooperate. I'm a victim to my hormones. If that's the thought pattern you're having, right. then that's the thought that's that you're going to perpetuate that pattern, but it's breaking it and kind of, okay, shifting the mindset to wait, my body is trying to protect me. This is right. probably happening for a reason. What is she trying to communicate? How can I give her what she needs so I can uh, thrive? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's interesting today I was meditating and every so often when I meditate, I get like inspired thought. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that what I got was release and receive. Um, and I was thinking the R and R upside down R, it was just in my mind, like this symbol of, of releasing and receiving. And I was thinking mm -hmm. about how, when we don't release, we start to get stagnation, we start to, to accumulate. And um, we obviously need to receive because otherwise we'll get deficient. And, I, and as you were talking, I was like, oh, that's like, it, it's like the new moon to be mm -hmm. full in the release, fully release. And when we don't fully release, whether it's like just crying or going through things or our bodies letting go, and allowing our bodies that space, we can't fully receive either. And it's just this yin and yang. Absolutely. We have to cycle. make room to let go. We have to make room to receive, which means we have to let go. Then we yeah. can receive. And it's like mm -hmm. that pattern, just like our cycle, menstrual cycles and Freudian rhythm that matches with the moon. Yeah. We also have this pattern within our emotional body of releasing, receiving, um, and also integrating, like you said, feeling those emotions, integrating the sadness, integrating the joy, integrating them yeah. and, and experiencing them, not suppressing them because then there's just no room for movement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, we had uh, talked beforehand or, uh, emailed beforehand about symptom care versus root care. I wanted to talk yeah. about that. That's a big one, you know, and it's, it's so, so basically, and, you know, allopathic medicine is, is, is <laughs> they're trained in diagnosing mm -hmm. and they're experts at it. They can, someone comes to them, their patients, and they are trained to figure out what diagnosis they can give them, what illness is it? Mm -hmm. And then they're trained to give them a prescription for that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they're excellent at that. They're also skilled surgeons. So, you know, if I'm going to have in a car accident and I need my arm sewed back on, I definitely don't want to go to uh, a Chinese medicine doctor. No yeah. offense. I no needles are going to help back with that. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, you know, in allopathic care is, is more around the symptom relief care paradigm. And that's, you know, okay, I've got a symptom. I've got acne. Let me go take some, um, heart, you know, some very strong antibiotics mm -hmm. to get rid of that or spirulactane. Um, I have irregular period. So let me take birth control pill to quote, unquote, regulate your period, which we all know it doesn't do. It just yeah. takes away your period. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. And you know, it's symptom or care relief because, Hey, I get it. A lot of people walk out happy at first. Mm -hmm. Hey, how simple is that? I go to the doctor. Hey, I have this issue X, Y, Z. Oh, here's a, pre a prescription. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Tomorrow you go get it. And okay. My symptom is gone, mm -hmm. but then what happens? It's a pill for every ill. So something right. else is going to manifest as a side effect. You're going to end up back into right. the revolving door of the doctor mm -hmm. yeah. for another prescription to fix the side effect of 
the first prescription. Whereas functional medicine is different. Chinese medicine as well, like all of these functional integrative um, modalities, because they're going to ask, hey, the practitioner or physician is going to say, well, why is that acne happening? Or why right. is that rash there? Or why are the, why are your periods painful? Mm-hmm. And they're going to put on their thinking cap and they're going to do the right tests. They're going to ask the right questions to get to the root cause of why that's happening so you can fix it. But then on the other hand, that requires a bit more work from the patient. So it's more of an interactive, uh, you know, uh, healing plan. Yeah. Whereas I get it. The other one is like, let me take a pill. Okay, done and done. Whereas the other one's like, okay, well, I need to maybe eat a bit more vegetables. I need to uh, get more sleep. I need to drink more water kind of thing, which is yes, not always, you know, the easiest convenient. Convenience, yeah. the yes. convenient way to go, but it yeah. will get to the root cause. So it's for, for basically the people who are ready to do the work and they're ready to not have to go back to the doctor over and over again. And they're ready to finally feel better and not have the same issue manifesting over and over and over. Yeah. I mean, what came to my mind is that it's total partnership and it's really taking responsibility because we just can't, we yes. can't get around that. We have to take responsibility and it's what's patient really- centered, it's patient centered yeah. and, and then being empowered to kind of take control. Right. Exactly. And so it's interesting. You get power with responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. And you had mentioned something really interesting earlier is about how our bodies are always communicating with us at all times. And sometimes we we become really good at ignoring those messages, but it, but we're so designed to connect with that. Our body is designed to talk to us because I mean our bodies talked to us before there was anything such as doctor really. Because back in the day we needed to survive anyway, <laughs> regardless if somebody else could tell us what's going on. Absolutely, it's yeah, it's listening to those signs and those sens- sensations, but we are actively, I feel like as a society trying to silence them yeah. either with, you know, a, you know, uh, ibuprofen all the time, Correct. or I'm tired. Let me just drink another coffee. Oh, I'm tired. Two hours later. Let me drink another coffee, eat some yeah. sugar, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of like, totally. we're always, we're always self-medicating. We're always trying to ignore these sensations and the, the way our body communicates. It's true. I mean, modern culture where we've gotten so into convenience, we love convenience. And I think it's marketed to us to program us that convenience is the best thing ever. I know, but it's, it's just like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's convenient and they're packaging it as it's convenient, not convenient. The best convenient. option. No, it's, it's going to cause convenient. so many more health issues. I know it's ludicrous. Exactly. It's logic, logic, you know, it's kind of coming back to common sense, right? But I think my favorite thing, my, I, I, one time, I can't remember what documentary this is on, but it was talking about uh, uh, triple bypass surgery for heart disease. And mm-hmm. it's like they take the vein from your thigh, correct? Mm-hmm. On the, I believe like a, so. I don't know the exact. It's, it's, it, there's a vein they take from the, I can't remember from which vein from the thigh, and then they mm-hmm. make another valve for your heart in this triple, in this type of heart surgery. And uh, they were, they were talking to surgeons about, well, you know, healthier diets have prevented people from needing the heart surgery in the first place. And it was, you know, it was one of those documentaries about healthy eating Mm -hmm. and uh, they were interviewing doctors, they were interviewing nutritionists. And then, and then one guy who, you know, was saying he needed this heart surgery. They also presented, Hey, well, you can eat this healthy diet for, you know, six months and see how you feel. And he goes, well, that's kind of extreme, isn't it? This, This diet, like you want me to cut out what, what, what? And then the person was like, well, isn't cutting out a vein from your thigh and going in surgery and having a completely different, like, isn't that extreme? I don't right? know. I feel like maybe eating a little <laughs> bit, shifting your, your nutrition plan yeah. is a little less extreme than undergoing this like intense surgery, but that's it's how such a good example it. though, of what, like we're, we're in right now, like the, the culture, it is crazy. Um, so I definitely, we talk about allopathic versus holistic care and obviously you were saying, I mean, there's a place for everything. So at what point do people go to allopathic? At what point is it something that cannot be taken care of with holistic? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's also so confusing because I think that's one of the most asked questions and I'm sure you get it too. Like who do I see for this problem? Like, who do I entrust and which practitioner? There's so many out there now. There's, um, and how I see it with like allopathic and like, so let's say, let's just break it down for a woman who's having hormone issues. Let's say, take that example. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so typically she can go to her OB-GYN, 
Um, and uh, that's usually covered by insurance. You know, you can go see your OBJ and you get, you get a, a visit covered, I think like at least once a year for a well woman's checkup. And um, what they're gonna generally tell you, you know, you get what, 15 to 30 minutes. They're probably not gonna run many tests unless there's something severely wrong. Um, and with most of your symptoms, most of the time, they're going to suggest the birth control pill, right? Right. As a, as a form of treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, or, you know, if, if you go to a functional nutritionist, a Chinese medicine doctor, if you're going to an integrative OBGYN, you're going to be given a little bit more options. Now I'm a firm believer that we can work together in mm -hmm. harmony. Yeah. I feel like allopathic medicine has its strengths. Yeah. So does functional, so does integrative. And it's really about like bridging that gap and working together. Yeah. Now that said, um, if I was having period problems, hormone imbalances, and you know, I didn't want to take the birth control pill, I would, I would not go to an OB gin to get to the root cause. Mm -hmm. Now I would go to an ob -GYN to, you know, still touch base with them. It's always great to have a primary health provider um, and, you know, go to your visit, especially if it's covered by insurance, mm -hmm. but also tell them, you know, I'm going to be working in tandem with a uh, acupuncturist or a uh, nutritionist because a lot of our hormones are what we eat. It's a lifestyle. It's it, there. Our hormones are built from, from what we eat. Mm -hmm. um, also a functional practitioner can run the right diagnostic test that you're not necessarily going to get at an allopathic doctor's office. Mm -hmm. So the standard ob -GYN is going to run like maybe a basic blood panel of the sex hormones, which really don't even tell us the full picture because we need to know how those hormones are metabolizing in the body. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a huge issue, especially if you're having these, um, intricate, intricate hormone imbalances, you need to see how those hormones are metabolizing. Um, and they're going to test for your thyroid. Most of them will just test right. your TSH, which is really right. a brain hormone. It shows us a pituitary activity. Right. So, you know, I would say, okay, if there's nothing wrong with you and you're just going in for your checkup every year and you're feeling groovy and everything is great and sunshine and lollipops, then mm -hmm. yeah, go to your ob -GYN, you know, get your well woman's every year. And then when something starts, if something starts to go off, then also seek help from um, a functional or integrative or naturopathic mm -hmm. practitioner or physician, I would say. Um, but, you know, you know, and also if you need surgery, so like, let's say for instance, if you're someone who suffers from endometriosis mm -hmm. and that's where the, you know, uterine like tissue grows instead of inside the uterus outside and different places can cause uh, a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, lifestyle interventions and nutrition are definitely key components of putting it into remission, mm -hmm. but it, the only way to really get rid of endometriosis completely is to have surgery. But if you don't have, if you don't make those lifestyle and dietary changes, it's just going to grow back. So right. what's the point of having the surgery? Yeah. And then, so that's one re way I would go to an allopathic doctor. I would, to, if I had a very bad, like stage three, stage four endometriosis growth, I would um, go to an excision surgeon, not to make sure I found someone who was an excision surgeon and, um, or like, you know, I, I had a case where I had a ruptured ovarian cyst mm -hmm. about eight years ago. I was on my honeymoon and a ovarian cyst ruptured and took off a chunk of my ovary and I was hemorrhaging Oh my! God. and I needed a, yeah, it was oh. horrible. And I was in Thailand, <laughs> like oh, an hour away from God. a hospital. Wow. So my husband, Jeez. we got in the car, he drove me to the hospital. I was in such pain. Well, if I didn't have emergency surgery, I would have died. Mm, so I was very, God. very, very grateful for allopathic medicine. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really just kind of looking at it. Yeah, you know, anything preventative point, yeah. is mm -hmm. once you have a disease, it's kind of like, okay, once you're ready, you can be diagnosed with the disease. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is prevent these diseases from ever happening. And also I think too, and, and maybe, and I don't, maybe I want to, want to see if you agree with this, mm -hmm. um, the whole act of diagnosing diseases too, I think sometimes is a little bit disempowering because mm -hmm. these diseases, especially syndromes have so many different symptoms and it's like their way, like, let's take IBS, for instance, mm -hmm. I think IBS is a, excuse my language, bullshit diagnosis. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. basically your allopathic doctor, your GP, you're mm -hmm. going in, you're like, oh my God, I'm going between diarrhea, constipation. I can't control mm -hmm. myself. 
oh, that's IBS. And, uh, you know, it's just normal. It's, it's, take. it's not, no, I just BS. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, exactly. I love that. I love it. It's just BS. And it's, it's basically your doctor saying, I don't understand what's causing that. So let's just, exactly. Like, it's the same thing with fibromyalgia. Oh, I mean, it's, um, yes, not that exactly. it's not real. It's absolutely 100% real. They just don't know what it is. So they kind of blanket statement. I think the same mm-hmm. thing with the infertility diagnosis. I think that's absolutely yes. I agree with you hundred percent. People people eventually get pregnant. So they're not infertile. You know, that's in, if you look infertile on the dictionary, it means that you cannot conceive period. There's no right or wrong. I mean, like, I mean, right or left, it just is what it is. That's what it says. So to me, that label is so damaging because people really believe that about themselves. That's why I feel strongly about that word because it can be accurate, but it's not for the, for the majority of times that it's given, it's not accurate. Mm-hmm. I agree. There's some, there's, they're like, oh, you know, they have the hidden, what is it? The hidden cause in infertility, uh, unexplained, uh, infertility, yeah, un- unexplained like, infertility, which I always am like, that is a half ass diagnosis. Totally. There is, a there lot is of them are. Something. Yeah, it's crazy. Totally. It's there's always something, there's always something and they find out what it is. Like, it's just, it mm-hmm. just, they haven't gotten to it yet, but that to me is just, it's such a, it's kind of like, just, it makes them feel better, I guess, to diagnose, or there's this pressure, I think mm-hmm. to diagnose. There is a pressure. Definitely. I think there is a pressure and there's also a pressure. Let's like, also, I like to sometimes put myself in the shoes of the, of the doctors. Like no one went to med school to harm people. Yeah, doctors absolutely. went to med school to help people. Like yeah. they're not bad people. They're no. just learning in a completely. It's a systematic issue. It's flaw completely in the, systematic. In the, it's it's like the the actual system. It's not mm-hmm. the doctors. It's that's the system is they, absolutely broken. Yeah, and let's not forget the average patient who's coming to them because this is what we've created. This model. They just want a quick fix. They want a prescription. They don't want to do a lot of the work. It's, it's true. Um, you know, and so. It, it's, it's easier for them. It, a lot of times, like my um, sister is a doctor and she's like, yeah, I understand what you're saying. She goes, and I agree with you. She's like, actually, can I get the test from you? Like, she's like, she wants mm-hmm. to, she wants all the functional diagnostic tests that I run on my client. She's like, I want yeah. those. Um, and she said, you know, she was like, but I have to say, I agree with you. But if I start talking about diet and nutrition, she's like, granted, I don't know as much as you do, but if I start talking about it to my patients, their eyes glaze over. Yeah. They're like, yeah. They, and she's like, they come in with list of the medicine they want already. Yeah. Because of the advertising, let's be honest, the advertising yep. should be illegal for pharmaceuticals. Yeah. yeah. Um, they come point. in with what they want. And if we don't give it to them, then they'll go to another clinic and then we lose business. Yeah. Oh Lord. So <laughs> I know it's, 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 I mean, no, it's interesting because when I work with people, a lot of it for me is psychological. I, I try to work on the bridge of relaying these new changes that they'd have to implement. And, but the thing is, even as, as savvy as I could be, it's always going to bring, produce overwhelm the first time when I yeah. really go over things, but I do also don't want to hold back because it's important. All these things are important. You know, the xenoestrogens, all these different things. It's just, unfortunately, we're living in a big mess. It's just with I know. produced foods, you know, like, um, not produced, um, processed Processed, thank you. It's the P word. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, processed yeah. food. I mean, um, all the toxins that we're living with, it's just unfortunate, but that's just is. It is. It is. And I think that's what, that's the power of like a good, um, practitioner like working if it in tandem of course you know if you're you're seeing your doctor but also in tandem seeing another practitioner really getting your a team but yeah. a really good practitioner will be able to support their patients by making this information like we're we're teachers also yep. it's like yeah. it's explaining this in a way that's not too overwhelming yes. and an organic and sustainable process each yeah. visit at a time yes. because if not it's just too much too soon and then that yeah. causes stress and we know what stress does so yeah, that's for sure. intuitive Without a doubt. (laughs) So even if I do do it slowly, it's still overwhelming. That's, you know, that because there's just so much, but yes, um, it is, you know, it's that psychological to do it in a way that people can receive it because you can't digest like, yeah. And where they are, where they are in their journey, because you have to be ready Mm -hmm. to receive this information. It's true. I feel like, you know, and that's why, you know, I'm I'm sure in like, it's, I always tell clients that are applying to work with me. I'm like, you know, this is a functional medicine is a, 
it, it's a relationship between patient and and practitioner, mm -hmm. but the patient is an active participant in the journey. And that's yeah. a big difference between allopathic where they're passive, the patient is just passive right. versus in a functional yeah. where they're an active participant. There's homework in between sessions. Yep. You got to actually do the work, yes. you know, but it's so, so worth it. It's so, so worth, worth it. it. You know, so that's the worth thing. It. Um, and a lot of people say, you know, even if I don't, people do say this and some of them end up getting pregnant. You know, you can never, you can never predict how people are going to do. Unfortunately, I wish I could. Uh, but a lot of them say mid journey before they get pregnant, you know what, even if it was just for how I feel, it's all worth it. Absolutely. Having your health is priceless. Yeah. Having good health. The energy, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the sleep, like, cause hormones can affect your sleep. I mean, it affects so many different things. So what is a common myth that you see with the menstrual cycle? The biggest one is that painful periods are normal, mm -hmm. but in fact, painful periods are common, but they're not normal. Yes. We're not meant to live with these painful periods. You know, what is that? The average woman has 400 menstrual cycles in her lifetime. Mm -hmm. Like, no, they're not supposed to be painful. That's a yeah. sign that there's an imbalance and there's something that could be done with it. I think the other myth would be that the birth control pill regulates your periods and balances your hormones. Mm -hmm. Huge myth. Um, Huge myth. Because as we know, you know, it, it, how it works, it's designed to shut off the communication between your brain and your ovaries. And you're not making any hormones anymore. So you're not having a period. So you're not getting all those health benefits. So it's not balancing your hormones. Absolutely at all. not. It actually really screws them up once you get off. <laughs> yeah. I just, I can't believe, like, I don't know if you, just sometimes the stuff that my, my clients, doctors that they've seen previously have, have prescribed them or advised them to do, um, you know, it's like clients with PCOS, Right. And, and they've been trying to get pregnant for two years. And then their doctor's like, well, get on the birth, get back on the, get on the birth control pill. Why I'm trying to get pregnant. Yeah. Just right. get on it for like three or four That's months. That's crazy. Crazy. Get on, it, get, yeah. get on it for three or four months and then yeah. get off and then try. It's reckless. It is reckless. Absolutely. It, it makes me like, I try not to get angry anymore. Cause I'm trying to like live this, <laughs> this like philosophy of life where I'm just like, you know, have equilibrium about everything. So I'm like, you're okay. not angry. You're passionate. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this doctor is completely destroying this woman's and husband's yeah. life like it's it, it was cavalierly with this like oh just here's a prescription three yeah. or four months a complete irresponsibility it's crazy and so as, yeah I mean there's so many things like that that happen a lot um and I wanted to go back to the painful periods because I know with Chinese medicine we have a couple of different patterns that can cause it but from your perspective um, in dealing with nutrition, like how do you get to that root cause and how do you, how, what have you seen as a common root cause? Let's put it that way. Definitely a common root cause is an imbalance in the gut. Mm -hmm. So having some type of um, definitely imbalance of gut bacteria. So if you have an overgrowth of bad gut bacteria, it releases um, uh, liposalicylsaccharides, LPS, like I don't, I'm not pronouncing it right. Lipo oh, it's okay. Those things are yeah. like impossible. LPS, <laughs> which causes it's, it causes inflammation and leaky gut, and it can cause chronic inflammation in the body. Um, also, uh, it can make endometriosis pain worse. Mm -hmm. uh, research has shown that. Um, and then, uh, definitely. So gut balances, hidden stressors in the gut, like parasites or yeast overgrowth, things like mm -hmm. that and nutrient deficiencies, mm -hmm. nutrient deficiencies, either because A, they're not right eating enough of the right foods or B, mm -hmm. because their gut is so imbalanced or microbiome is so imbalanced or not digesting and breaking down and absorbing the nutrients from the right. food they're eating. Yeah. So um, I think those would be the two main things. And then obviously very stress, stress would probably be number one, a stressful mm -hmm. lifestyle. But then it's really important to note that stress doesn't have to be just like, your stereotypical stress, like, oh my gosh, my job's so stressful. I'm working so much. It can mm -hmm. be like a hidden stressor. Like we, I just discussed about, you know, uh, parasites, yeast overgrowth, mm -hmm. toxins, mm -hmm. um, endotoxins. It could be emotional stress stressors, mm -hmm. relationship, um, you know, any, any type of emotional stressor. And it can be like an illness is a stressor to the body, jet lag, mm -hmm. 
Um, so there's a lot of different types of stressors. So it's how are we, how are we navigating our life? How are we, how are we responding to the stress? What are, what are the techniques we're using to get into more of a parasympathetic rest and relax, you know, state? Um, yeah. And, and so I think those would be the three things definitely uh, that are the cause of painful periods. I'd be interested to hear how those correlate with the, the, the with Chinese medicine. Spleen and stomach, that's the gut. But the thing is, if you're not producing enough blood, it can go into stagnation. It can start to be blood deficiency and also stagnation. Um, and so different things can lead to different things in Chinese medicine. It's like really understanding the root cause, but cold, cold can tend to lead to stagnation also can lead to pain. So painful periods. Mm -hmm. um, but to find out all of these, you do like gut testing. I do. Yes. On all of my clients, I, um, in my root cause program, I, I run a GI map. Yeah. That's where I always begin. I never yeah. begin with hormone testing. Yeah. Oh, always that's great. Gut. It's yeah, so I, important. I, I think so too. I mean, for us too, the spleen and stomach are the center and it literally is the center um, because every mm -hmm. organ has a different direction and the spleen and stomach are like in the earth in the center. Mm -hmm. So like everything really starts from there. It makes sense. It makes total sense. Yeah. And then the importance of the liver too. I think that would be yeah. another one for, for is blood. like if, if there's stagnation in the liver, then yeah. So the liver okay. is for a couple of things. One of the things is it stores blood in preparation for the period. So people can be liver blood deficient, not necessarily stagnant. Um, but mm. the thing is right around your period, it's preparing. So it works harder because it stores the blood and it's preparing the body for the period. And when it has, when it's already weak and it doesn't have the full reserves to do everything because it is in charge of two things around your period. It's in charge of, of preparing yourself because it's storing the blood. And it's also always in charge of the free flow of energy in your body. But if it's weak or compromised or stagnant in any way, um, you start to get irritable because you feel more stressed right before your period because it's Absolutely. busy trying to prepare and it doesn't have the reserves or the free yep. flow in order to do that. That, that makes so much sense. And I, I remember learning, uh, hearing about that from about Chinese medicine that, you know, if you're irritable, that means there's something in your liver and that's, you know, let's talk about PMS right before our periods, exactly. right. Especially like the few days and not to mention, like, that's fascinating. So the liver, I never knew that actually, that the blood is in the liver before it leaves the body. It's it stored in the liver the, before the period. The liver's job is um, to ensure free flow of energy in the body, but it also mm. stores the blood. That's fascinating. And yeah. if you think, so it's under a lot of pressure because of that, but then also right before our periods, we get another, another spike of estrogen. So yes. it's a lot of burden on our, on our liver to neutralize and get yes. rid of. So then if you have any uh, detox issues, a sluggish liver, mm -hmm. then of course you're going to feel irritable and have PMS symptoms right before or yeah. migraines or a swollen breast or, you know, just, it, it makes complete sense So supporting these organs and supporting the free flow of energy is very important. Yeah. And also before we get our period, sometimes we'll get really tired. It's actually good to lay down because when you're laying down, you're allowing the liver to hold the blood. You're just changing the, the way, the direction that you're in. So mm -hmm. you're allowing your body to not have to work as hard. And so it's okay around that time to lay down just to assist the body mm -hmm. to prepare itself. Um, but you were talking about common versus normal. The same thing happens with PMS. PMS is not normal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be losing relationships, careers, friends no. because of PMS shouldn't be happening. <laughs> and it, it shouldn't like, you shouldn't have your life be like, Oh, two weeks of my two weeks of the month are hell and two weeks are great. Like you exactly. should be able to feel great all the time. Exactly. I mean, not feel like amazing. It's normal to feel a little bit more introverted. You're always and... going to have your flow and your, you know, natural cycles, which is normal. Like we were talking about earlier in the show, like you start to, you know, you have your time of introversion, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, new moon, full moon, um, a time where you're like more out and, and expressive. So yeah, that's normal, but exactly. You shouldn't be feeling lousy <laughs> exactly. and, and angry and, you know, all those different things. Um, and the body's supposed to have its ebbs and flows, but in a normal manageable way. And the same thing happens with, um, 
with menopause, people think that you have to have all these horrible symptoms and hot flashes. That can be 100% controlled with herbs, herbs and food mm-hmm. and acupuncture. And also preventive, preventative care. So women that are more, in their, when they're younger, who have horrible periods, PMS, mm-hmm. addressing mm-hmm. it then before menopause Correct. hits, because they're going to exactly. have worse menopause if they don't address it. 100%. 100%. I mean, it's totally, it's such a foundation and it will, you know, if you have really horrible PMS, you should take care, you should, you must take care of it early on because that is a foundation yeah. for what's coming and you don't want that for sure. Yeah. Because it's a sign of inflammation and inflammation yeah. leads to disease. Yeah. So you want to catch the inflammation. You don't want to have chronic inflammation for years no, and no. years. No, it's detrimental. And it's interesting because you literally feel your emotions go inflamed as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always know when it's imbalanced. I think, you know, because every month, just because I'm the period guru doesn't mean every month I have like magical rainbow and unicorn periods. (laughs) You know, actually I got into this because I had horrible periods. So I wanted to fix myself. And then I decided to share that with others. But like, for instance, like I'm uh, starting my period in a few days with the full moon. And I I just know my estrogen detox path. Yes, the full mm-hmm. moon. So this Saturday here will be full moon. So on Halloween. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, You're <laughs> like me. I've had um, but, you a, know, a blood mooner. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I-, I love it. I love it. I, I, usually they say healers, uh, healers and um, are typically bleed on the full moon. So yeah. that makes sense for the line of work we're in. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, I'm not, I, my, I can feel that my liver is, is sluggish right now. I can feel that um, my estrogen detox pathways are a little bit closed. I'm having mm-hmm. a little bit of a headache. And, mm-hmm. to, and I know that when I get a headache before my period, that there's an imbalance. Mm-hmm. And so I think back, well, how was I treating myself this cycle, stress levels? It's a, it's a good time to take inventory. And yeah, yeah, it matches up for some of the things I'm going through right now. And so it's okay. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, Hey, I can have some grace on my, myself. I know that absolutely this is just what's going on in my life right now, but it's also being aware and not just thinking, well, this is normal or exactly. I'm just going to not do it. I can just be proactive, you know, Hey, I need to eat some more broccoli sprouts this month. Yeah, Go exactly. Bit. I mean, it really <laughs> is to, <laughs> or take dim sum pl- supplements, right? <laughs> Wait, yeah. <laughs> um, so what is one thing that you think every one woman should consider when it comes to their cycle? Definitely uh, tracking it. Mm-hmm. using some type of system, whether it be your calendar in your room or in your iPhone. But why do that when there are so many apps out there nowadays you can download for free? Yeah. Um, and just, if anything, just to enter the start date and the end date. So every month, you know how the length of your cycle, that's great information yeah. right there. If you're right. working with a practitioner, okay, my, my cycles are usually 35 days in length or my cycles are 90 days. Oh, wow. I had no idea. I went three months without a period. Yeah. Um, take it up a notch and start tracking your fertility signs so you can track ovulation. Yeah. So then you know the length of your follicular phase and the length of your luteal phase because that right. also greatly helps out your practitioner. Oh, for sure. Um, right? It, yeah. it gives us insight, uh, so much insight. Um, so I would say definitely track your cycles and kind of be, uh, start that that line of communication with, with your body and, and start to be empowered so you know what your normal is basically. Totally. And a lot of people um, do track and they'll track with the app and not, not look at like their fertile signs. And mm-hmm. they'll think because the app tells them that they're, they're ovulating day 14, you know, yeah. but it could be day 18 or, you know, maybe it's a short luteal phase or early. So it's, it's so important to really look at all the details of what your and the signs and symptoms or what your body's telling you. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot, no app can predict when you're ovulating. Yeah. So it's important. Like these apps are great. They serve a purpose, but if you're relying on them to tell you when you're ovulating, then it's not accurate. No, it's not. And it's interesting. We were talking about, um, what were we talking about? A hormone that was coming from the brain, the TSH. I find that the LH, taking the LH sticks is very similar to just testing your TSH. You know, because it all it tells you is that your brain is trying for something, but it doesn't tell you what your body's doing. Yes. So well, there you go with the, the hormones. And I mean, we know that measuring yeah. progesterone is so important, you know, to finish it off. We're basically starting, but not finishing when we do the OPK. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially like women with PCOS, mm-hmm. right, are going to have uh, several LH surges through the month. 
right. and not ovulate. Um, so it's very misleading or, you know, you see that pattern in women that are trying to ovulate. So it can be used in tandem, but you can't just rely on an LH stick surge to, yeah. to, to confirm ovulation. So yeah, it says, ov well, basically, anyway, it says ovulation is about to happen, but it's not necessarily true. Exactly. Anyway. All it means is your body's trying to ovulate. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the ovaries responded. <laughs> Um, so awesome. So how can people find you if people want to work with you and you do everything online? Yeah. So I do everything's yeah. online in my root cause program. So that's a way to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I did just end enrollment for 2020, but I did just release a interactive ebook called the period solution, 28 day hormone balancing plan. And so it is an actionable guide for those of you who don't really know about four phases of the menstrual cycle and have been listening to this and are like, I want to learn about that. Uh, it breaks mm -hmm. down the four phases and it has grocery shopping lists for each week, recipes for each week. Um, so for each phase of the menstrual cycle to support uh, us where our hormones are because our hormones ebb and flow. So our demands for food will change, exercise, and we need to adapt our bodies to these uh, our hormones throughout the cycle. So that's a great place. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram at Jenna Longoria Health. I am pretty active there and would love to uh, be connected. Awesome. I love your Instagram. She has a great Instagram, you guys. So definitely check it out. Um, and thank you again for coming on. It was so much fun talking to you. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. It's always a pleasure.